Yeah, Republican war on public schools. Jim Hightower's piece this morning, he's got a Substack newsletter as well, uh, is all about the right-wing billionaires who are funding the destruction of public schools and the move to private schools. Um, I'm, I'm taking a little more uh, wide angle perspective on this and putting it in a historical context. Um, I was six years old when Sputnik went up in 1957. And uh, this, uh, you know, it was the first satellite in space. And I remember my dad taking me out in the backyard and we, we tracked this little dot of light moving across the sky. That was Sputnik. Um, my my uh, best friend's father was a ham radio operator and he had a shortwave radio and we listened to it. It was going ping as it went overhead. This uh, really kicked the backsides of uh, President Eisenhower and Congress. And within a few months, uh, you know, in, uh, in his uh, state, 1958 State of the Union address, uh, Eisenhower called for massive funding for education in the United States. He did not want to surrender our technological superiority to the Soviet Union. And they did it. Within, a, within less than a year, Congress passed the National Defense Education Act that just poured all kinds of money into our public school system, uh, including programs for gifted kids, which have now largely died uh, across the country. I, I was in one of those programs, and it was, it was fascinating. Um, but, you know, those programs died when Reagan came into office. Reagan, when Reagan came into office, federal spending on education was 12% of all of all spending on education. When Reagan left office, it was down to 6%. And now as a result of the Bush and Trump presidencies, it's down to 3%. And you know, you can blame some of this on uh, Michael Bennett. He was, uh, uh, or excuse me, William Bennett, um, uh, Bill Bennett, who was uh, Ronald Reagan's secretary of education. Um, you know, this, this whole destruction of public schools thing goes back in many ways to the uh, Brown versus Board of Education decision, where the uh, U.S. Supreme Court said, um, you know, if, if uh, the U.S. Supreme Court said you have to have integrated schools, separate but equal is no longer legal. And so Reagan said, no, we're gonna push back on that. And this is the guy he put in charge of the Department of Education in the 1980s, Bill Bennett. To reduce crime, Let's start but I, I do know that it's true that if you wanted to reduce crime, you could, if that were your sole purpose, you could abort every black baby in this country and your crime rate would go down. That would be an impossible, ridiculous, and morally reprehensible thing to do, but your crime rate would go down. It's like, you know, after having said it, he realized what he'd said out loud and but anyhow, that was, you know, hey, you know, integrated public schools? No, let's replace them all with, you know, white academies, with private schools and Christian schools, religious schools, and let's start paying for those. Reagan had brought Jerry Falwell into the White House and, and uh, Bill Bennett, obviously, who just, you know, you just heard from. Um, he wanted to amend the Constitution to allow mandatory school prayer. He unsuccessfully proposed a national voucher system based on tax credits. So the parents could send their kids to religious schools, and, you know, like Jerry Falwell's. Um, the core Republican positions on education ever since the Reagan presidency have been, number one, let white students attend schools that are islands of white privilege where they don't have to confront the true racial history of America, number one. Number two, use public money to support private, for-profit, and religious schools that can accomplish this and can cycle some of that money back to Republican politicians. Keep in mind, this is a $700 billion a year industry. Number three, destroy the public schools teachers unions. Number four, end the teaching of science, critical thinking, evolution, and sex education. And number five, bring fundamentalist Christianity into the classroom. These are the explicit, overt goals of the Republican Party. Marco Rubio, uh, just a few months ago, said that our public school system is a cesspool of Marxist indoctrination. He said, dangerous academic constructs like critical race theory and radical gender theory are being forced on elementary school children. We need to ensure no federal funding is ever used to promote these radical ideas in schools. Here's the deal. There is basically no more powerful urge that humans and pretty much every other animal have than to protect their young. 
I mean, you know, you 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 attack a, a a mother mouse who's got some babies, and she will she will surrender her life for her babies. Uh, this is this is an urge that is absolutely at the base of you know it's 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 more fundamental and foundational than pretty much any others. I mean, it's it's right up there with hunger, and and in fact, it beats hunger, and. So if you're a politician looking for an issue to motivate voters, just tell them your kids are under attack. It's cynical, but it's extraordinarily effective. Mike Pompeo, you know, in an interview with Semaphore said, uh, I told a story often, I guess ask who's the most dangerous person in the world? Is it Chairman Kim? Is it Xi Jinping? The most dangerous person in the world is American Federation of Teachers President Randy Weingarten. It's not even close. Really, it's the teachers unions. And, you know, Donald Trump just a couple months ago laid out his plan to deal with America's number one problem. Quote, we have pink-haired communists teaching our kids. Seriously. And then he argued that the Constitution requires religious education. And says, uh, for this reason, my administration will aggressively pursue intentional violations of the Establishment Clause and the Free Exercise Clause of the Constitution. Why? because Donald Trump said the Marxism being preached in our schools is also totally hostile to Judeo-Christian teachings, and in many ways it's resembling a new, an, a new established religion. Right. Jonathan Chait, writing for New York Magazine, at every level of government, Republicans have begun to act on these beliefs. Over the past three years, legislators in 28 states have passed at least 71 bills controlling what teachers and students can say and do at school. A wave of library purges, subject matter restrictions, potential legal threats against uh, educators has followed. I mean, this, this, there's a long history here. I mean, in 1844, there was a week of riots in Philadelphia that uh, left 25 people dead and uh, uh, over 100 severely injured. Uh, two churches were burned down along with about two city blocks of, of homes. Uh, this was a debate over whether there should be daily Bible reading in the schools. And actually, it wasn't even a debate about whether they should be reading the Bible. It was a debate about whether it should be a Catholic Bible or a Protestant Bible. Seriously, that, that was what the riots were. The Scopes Monkey Trial in 1925, it didn't provoke riots, but, you know, it, it, it laid down a marker. You may not teach evolution. And then Tennessee, Mississippi, and Arkansas all passed laws saying it was illegal to, to teach evolution. Glenn Youngkin in Virginia road school choice, in quotes, or parental rights, actually, was the phrase that he was using, uh, to the governorship in, you know, in a swing state. And, uh, you know, this is, this is, destroying public schools is a big deal for Republicans. And, and now you've got, you know, billionaires funding this effort, and you've got these right-wing groups all around the country that are trying to take over local school boards. David Pepper had a uh, a great post on his Pepper Perspectives uh, Substack newsletter about how to spot them. Uh, basically, what it boiled down to for him was, you know, you look at the names that are running for school board, and then you look at the endorsement list for Moms for Liberty. Although there are other groups that are also, you know, uh, aggressively trying to place their people on school boards, um, you know, with what some would characterize as basically anti-public education um, uh, platforms. In Ohio, Mike DeWine has, is trying to take over the entire state's educational system because he doesn't like the liberals who are getting elected to local and school boards. So he's having the state uh, board of education basically take over the whole state. Now there's a, a restraining order against him, but he says he's going to do it anyway. I mean, after all, he's a Republican in Ohio. He, he figures he can do anything he wants. I mean, th th this is how bad it's gotten. And, and on top of that, now they're, they're banning book titles like there's no tomorrow. I, I have a list for you that's just going to shock you. And, uh, you know, this is, I mean, this is a new one, right? <laughs>